All of today's glitches were submitted by listeners just like you. If you have a glitch you want to share with the channel, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And as always, thank you. Let's start with the backstory. In February of 2019, I was in a bad car accident. My Tacoma was totaled as I went through a yellow light, and someone turned in front of me. I swerved out of the way and they hit the bed of my truck at a weird angle. My truck smashed into the light post on 52nd Street and McDowell, on the border where Scottsdale meets Phoenix. Like any car accident, it happened so fast and so unexpectedly. I was extremely fortunate to walk away from this accident with no major injuries. Although I was shook up a bit, and did have some whiplash. My truck looked like a grenade went off in it. Still, to this day, I have no idea how I survived. I thought I had died for a second as I remembered a weird sense of euphoria, and then heard an insane buzzing, almost like a freight train. However, to my surprise, when I came to, I looked in my rearview mirror to see that I was alive, and was able to get myself out of the truck to check on the other driver. Fast forward a couple of days, and I was spending a lot of time alone at my apartment, with no vehicle, as I dealt with the insurance formalities, and I took that week off of work. Everything felt very off for this entire week. I chalked this all up to a haze and maybe even a slight concussion from the accident, even though I know I remember the exact events that just weren't quite adding up. A week or so had passed. I finally got a rental car and I was getting the urge to get out of the house. I ran a few errands, took my dog to the park, and visited a couple family members who were a bit concerned with me since the accident since I had kind of gone dark for a week or so since the accident. Later in the day, I picked up my uncle, who was only three years older than me, and basically like an older brother so that we could go out and grab a bite to eat. We stopped at Circle K since I had driven all over town at that point and needed some gas. I parked at the pump, and I sent a text as my uncle walked in before me. I was walking to the door, and as I got to the curb approaching the door, an elderly woman drove up in a beat-up white car, and she parked at the handicapped sign. She got out of her car right about as I was nearing opening the door for myself. I noticed she was moving a bit labored, and I vividly remember getting a weird sensation, and had a strange internal monologue that was essentially like, Hey dude, you can be a dick and walk in and get gas or you can wait 15 seconds for this elderly, overweight woman and hold the door for her. I waited and held the door. She didn't break eye contact with me as she walked by. I'm prone to getting the goosebumps pretty easy, and for whatever reason, the look she gave me had the hair on my arms standing up. She didn't say thank you. She just stared at me. It wasn't an intimidating look, more just hyper-analyzing me. I thought it was pretty weird, but who am I to judge? Circle K tends to attract some strange characters, so I didn't think too much of it. And she walked right into the cashier. My uncle was now standing in line paying for his soda. He paid and stood directly to the side as he waited for me to put 20 on pump 3. The woman now approached the cashier and ordered one scratcher ticket random, and I didn't think a thing of it. She turned and slowly started making her way towards the door. As she turned to walk away, I dropped the 20 on the counter and said, 20 on pump 3, please. She turned around in sheer confusion and astonishment as she looked into my eyes with her jaw on the floor. She was in complete awe and she looked right at the cashier and said, I thought Logan just said that. You nailed it. That is my name. The cashier was now extremely confused. He literally just said, What? Who said what now? Again, as clear as day, she said, I thought Logan just said that. 
and he said, I don't know who Logan is. I looked at my uncle with complete astonishment. He was as confused as I was, and we were both speechless. She started again towards the door, and I looked at the cashier. All he did was shrug his shoulder and shake his head in a bit of confusion. I can imagine he's seen all kinds of weird stuff, and he had no clue that was my name. I looked back at my uncle, who was still frozen with confusion. I knew that I needed answers. At this point, the woman was approaching the door to leave. I ran to the door and opened it for her again and said, Ma'am, that name you just mentioned? You said you thought that someone had said something. What was the name you referenced? She looked at me with pure confusion and said, What are you talking about? I replied, At the register. You said that you thought someone had said something. What was the name that you referenced? You said you thought you heard someone say something. She put her hand on my shoulder and just said, Sweetie, we've never spoken before. And just walked into her beat up white car and drove off. I still have no clue what happened. I'm just thankful my uncle was there to witness this because I don't think I'd even believe it myself if he wasn't there to confirm that this took place. Any ideas? I obviously have zero clues if my accident has anything to do with this. It's highly unlikely that it does, but it does feel odd that this week or two following the accident, I was extremely out of it, and in a haze, and then something this bizarre takes place. Hi Raven, I don't know if this is really considered a glitch, but it is kind of interesting, at least to me. A little background, I am a quote-unquote stasher, meaning I stash things in drawers or cabinets, places they don't really go. Given that, I lose a lot of things. When I do lose things in my house, I obviously look for them, but I never find them. But if I just sit down for a couple of minutes and think about something else, the location of the object pops into my head. When I look for the object in the place that popped into my head, and it is always there. For instance, I recently lost my glasses. I looked around for about 15 minutes. I know you would think that I would just sit down and use my find things method. I finally sat down and thought about something else. Suddenly, I pictured my glasses underneath my dresser. I went to my bedroom, got down on my hands and knees, shined my phone light under the dresser, and there they were. I'm kind of famous in my family for finding things. My mother called me a few years ago to ask if I could think of where her diamond bracelet had ended up. Immediately, I pictured in my head flowers with brown underneath them, like dirt. I told my mother this. She went outside and looked in her flower garden in front of her house, and the one in the back of her house, but no watch. She gently teased me, saying that I had lost my touch. Since I lived right up the street from her at the time, I got in the car and went to her house. When I walked into her house, I was immediately drawn to her closet. I stood in her closet looking at the stack of shoeboxes. My mother has a shoe problem. All of a sudden, my eyes focused on a flowered shoebox. I'm sure you can see where this is going. I opened the flowered shoebox, and there was a pair of brown loafers inside. I picked up one of the loafers and turned it upside down. Out fell the watch. I really didn't want to ask my mother why she put her diamond watch in a shoe in a shoebox in her closet but she confessed that she'd had a couple glasses of wine at her country club the night before and had been wearing it. She wanted to keep it safe. I guess she's a stasher too. You know, the apple into the tree. In addition to my skill at locating lost objects, I can predict celebrity deaths. For instance, I woke up one day singing the song Lucille by Kenny Rogers. I picked up my phone, the first headline I saw said that Kenny Rogers had passed away. This has happened with various other celebrities as well over the years. 
and celebrities should beware if I start thinking about them. I don't usually specifically feel regular people's deaths. However, very recently, my ex-husband and my daughter's father was very close to dying from cancer. The night he passed away, I suddenly woke up because I was very thirsty. I don't have a clock in my bedroom, except for my phone, which I didn't look at. I went into the kitchen to get a bottle of water and said to myself, Is it 4am? I looked at the clock and sure enough, it was 4am. The next morning, I got a text from his mother saying that he had passed away at 4am. He died in a time zone that's an hour ahead of mine, but it was still 4am. Sometimes I will get a general weird feeling. My sister calls it a disturbance in the force. But something always happens soon after the weird feeling starts. Sometimes with some person close to me and sometimes not. Sometimes a car accident near my house or sometimes a tragic event somewhere in the world. And that sort of thing. I've learned to trust that weird feeling. If I feel weird about something... I just stay home, trust that intuition. This is a true account of a teleporting knife. This was a special knife. It was my pocket knife. A very beloved pocket knife that was used frequently on a daily basis for utilitarian reasons during my day-to-day -day operations. It belonged in my pocket as much as my wallet, keys, and change. I used it often in my line of work, which is putting in water lines. It was just the right size and usefulness that made it one of my favorite pocket knives ever. The knife was being used one day as usual, but was accidentally left in the muddy ground. I had not realized it was left on the ground until after coming home. I was laying in bed and realized I'd forgotten my pocket knife at work that day. I had used it to clean my excavator tractor tracks, and then I stuck it in the ground. That evening I remembered that I had not retrieved it, and the realization that it was still on the ground was disheartening. And to make matters worse, I also remembered that I had even unknowingly ran over that area with the tractor, burying it deeper in the mud. I knew that evening after my recollections of the day, that my beloved knife was forever gone. I was truly saddened by the fact of my negligence and wished that I had it back. I went to sleep, upset by my mistake. The next morning, my wife came into the bedroom with coffee and a question. To my surprise, she asked me why there was a muddy opened knife on the countertop, which was not there the night before. My wife had no idea that I had went to sleep saddened with the knowledge of the loss of my beloved knife. When I went to see what it was that she was asking about, I could not believe that it was actually my very knife. The very one that I know I left underneath the ground. But there it was, covered in mud, just as I had left it. Except on the countertop. I never carry an open pocket knife. I always clean it and close it before putting it back in my pocket. I remember it was in the ground. No one brought it back, so how did it get on my counter? I have to wonder if a loving presence, possibly my recently departed dad, somehow brought me back my beloved knife that was at least six miles away and underground. I still have the knife and am very thankful to say that it continues to still get used daily. So, I've had some strange experiences before now. One was actually read on this podcast before, but my life has been weird for a little while now. Let me provide some background information. I, 27, female, almost died last year. Nobody would take me seriously, and it took two walk-in clinics and three ERs five days to diagnose an appendix that had already been bursting. 
Turns out, I had chronic appendicitis, with an abnormal presentation. I felt the pain on the left side instead of the right. I had been sick since I was 14 years old, and looking back on past medical charts, I had the same symptoms multiple times during my life. I would be in severe pain, puking blood, fainting, etc., and nobody ever listened to me. I was labeled a hypochondriac, and even my mom told me it was just my head making things up. I had surgery, and my life fell apart afterward. My family turned on me. I became homeless less than a week into recovery. Nothing was the same, and I didn't feel sick anymore. I was finally able to tell a secret I had kept for almost 20 years, and nobody believed me. They would tell me I was a horrible monster, and for a while I was convinced that I had died in surgery, because everything was so different. It took me a while to be convinced that I wasn't dead. My fiancé and I moved in with friends, and we saged the house for the first time. I was shaking violently the whole time, and then fell to the floor crying. I had a mental block, hiding my childhood memories from me, and... It felt as though someone left me and I became a lot more sensitive to things around me, along with having memories back. I became obsessed with the energy around me. I could feel it now. I could feel people's emotions as my own and learned a trick to get rid of the negative energy I had been picking up before. This brings us to the other day, when I experienced a glitch that actually made me question reality again for the first time in a long time. I had picked up a lot of negative energy from my roommate who was PMSing. I was snapping at people and just getting angry about little things. I realized what was happening and did my trick to get rid of the energy, and it worked. I felt better immediately. But then I noticed my roommate's dog's eyes and saw that the one eye had a chunk of blue in it. I pointed it out to my roommate and she said, yeah, he's got a pie-colored eye. And I was confused. You see, I've known her for a while at this point and could never remember what color her dog's eyes are. But in that moment, I remembered what she had always told me when I asked. I said, I thought you said he had liver-colored eyes. And I knew that was what she had told me before, and I remembered her telling me this multiple times. And every time I was confused about it, but never questioned it. Because what the heck does a liver even look like? Liver-colored eyes doesn't make sense at all. And then she looked at me like I was crazy, and said that she's never used that term before to describe anything. I started doing some research on it. She has a red Merle Australian Shepherd. And according to my Google search, red Merle is a misleading color and it's more accurately described as a liver merle, which is a blue merle, whose color didn't come in correctly and the color looked exactly like her dog. Her and her fiancé had never heard the term before, and the only time I had ever heard the term is when she was describing her dog's eye color to me. So how did I know an obscure, rarely used term for her dog's coloring? And why can I suddenly remember so clearly what she had told me his eye color was now, when I could never remember before? Did me clearing the negative energy from my body send me to an alternate reality, where the only difference is my roommate's dog's eye color? Sorry if this story is confusing, I tried my best to get this out coherently. Thank you for reading this. It's nice to have someone to tell that won't just think I'm crazy. Twice in my life, I've seen some sort of spark that I can't explain. It might be two unrelated events, but I'll share them both anyway, since they aren't very long stories. The first was around age 8. I walked into the bathroom and for a split second, the right side of my vision was filled with brilliant neon blue. There was no sound or other strange effects, and nowhere it could have come from. My parents' best guess was that I'd somehow seen the blue clothesline out the window, but this was as if it were an inch from my face. 
The only other explanation I can think of is that something like a laser pointer hit me. But this was in the early 90s when such bright blue lasers weren't available to the general public. Anyway, there's also a mile of forest between that window and the nearest road or house, so... The only place such a laser could have come from is the sky. The second time was around age 15. I was repairing a clock radio which had a built-in light, on which one of the wires had broken off. I had opened it up on the kitchen counter, the only available workspace at the time, and heated the solder joint to install a replacement wire. As soon as the wire touched the solder joint, there was a bright white flash from the other end of the wire. This wasn't a simple electric spark, though. For one, it looked completely different, more like the end of a sparkler. It was much, much brighter than any electric spark you'd get from a household outlet. It also made no sound or smell, and it lasted only, I would estimate, a millisecond at most. The strangest part is, I can't think of how this spark was created. The clock wasn't plugged in, and had no battery. The area that I was working in wasn't near any capacitors that might have held a charge. The other end of the wire, where the spark actually came from, was just sticking up in the air. If it had been a normal electric spark, it should have been at the point where the wire touched the circuit, not at the other end connected to nothing. This only happened once. Touching the wire to it again didn't yield any more sparks. The light circuit was completely fried, though. No visible damage, but it just didn't work at all when previously it had worked fine if I touched the wires together. I've done countless hobbyist electronic tinkering in the 20 years since, and I've never seen anything like this again. I know it sounds like I just made a mistake, but electricity just doesn't behave that way. The other day, May 16th, 2024, my earplugs went missing thanks to my cat Lola, and me placing them on the edge of my nightstand. Scouring the room, looking top to bottom in every crevice, pillow, I shook the pillow cases, looked under the beds, in the Rice Krispie Treats box, behind the computer. The point is, I looked everywhere. The earplugs I use are the Max for Kids orange plugs because the adult ones are too large and practically wax your ear if it's too long. Due to the worry of toxicity, I was adamant to find them, while also being upset that Lola knocked them off. Interestingly enough, while searching, I found a mysterious single earplug hiding in my yoga mat. How the hell that got there, I'll never know. I think it was the precursor to what happened next. I was sleeping, producing Z's in my Z's factory, tossing and turning like a hurricane as I usually do, when suddenly I felt something at the left edge of my pillow. It woke me up, actually. I'm a super sensitive sleeper, hence the earplugs and sleep mask. And there they were, the earplugs, gently pressed together in the exact middle of the edge of the pillow. Again, I shook the pillowcase, and nothing came out. So I suspect this was a glitch. Or perhaps something was protecting the cats, placing it there knowing how concerned I was if any of them had found or eaten or chewed on them. I've had a pretty paranormal life, to the point that I watched a bird disappear in a house, so this is nothing new to me. If you want to hear that story and the rest from that hell house, let me know. I'll send them in. As a matter of fact, Josh, I would love if you would send those in, because those are definitely, they sound interesting, as I'm trying to say. Please do. I've posted before about how I love to crochet, and that I crochet especially when I have to wait at a doctor's office. Well, today was no exception. But this time I was going to be there for far longer than any other doctor's appointment. This was going to be a special scan called a DAT scan. That is one for people that have Parkinson's disease. 
It assesses how well the medication is keeping, and I think the stage of the disease. It takes four hours of prep time and then 30 minutes of actual scan time. I put my yarn and crochet hook in a cloth grocery bag with a drink. I get there, and I take out the drink, the yarn, and then it's just an empty bag. No crochet hook. I checked on my pockets, and still, no crochet hook. I looked in the car in case it fell out, but again, no hook. I looked twice for that hook. Well, you might have guessed it. When I look in the bag to finish the drink, there is the hook. Only the two things and the hook. There should have been no way that I could have missed it. And no, it, it was not inside the yarn, it was just resting on the bottom of the bag. I checked that bag twice, twice, and it was not in there. So how? I don't get it. What am I, some kind of magnet for glitches? So, I've been listening to your stories lately and absolutely love this kind of stuff. It's fun and fascinating. Especially since I'm no stranger to weird paranormal happenings for most of my life. And we've experienced a bit of paranormal stuff in this current house. I'm not sure whether to chalk this up to paranormal, glitch, or something else, but all the same, it's weird. This is a strange thing that happened to my 14-year-old daughter just recently. She had received a pair of jeans for Christmas this year from her grandma, and she really liked them. And she had worn them several times before this incident. All of a sudden, one day, she can't find them. And so she turns the house upside down for two months. Over and over again. Determined that they must be somewhere because... Where else could they be? And my house is not the cluttery type either, so it's relatively easy to find stuff. Now here's where things get odd. She walks into our TV room the other day, and there my puppy is in the middle of the room chewing on the top of the jeans. What the hell? I keep thinking that she must have dropped them under the couch, or something, but... She swears she took the couch apart and left no rock unturned in our house, several times over. My puppy won't climb the stairs in our house either. They're tall and narrow and freak him out, even if you try to assist him. You would hear him if he tried. He's big and still kind of clumsy, so he couldn't have got them from upstairs in a bedroom or laundry room. My husband and other daughters swear they haven't seen or borrowed them. And, like I said, my house is quite tidy and organized, so there really isn't anywhere for things to hide. And a pair of jeans for a 14-year-old are not exactly a small item either. But, honestly, it's not the first item in our house to mysteriously disappear into thin air, so I'm not entirely surprised. It sure does make me scratch my head, though. So how about this one? I live in Sevierville, and I see some of my doctors in Knoxville. The first of the year I changed insurance, and one of my doctors does not accept my new one. So I was told that I needed to find a new one. They then cancelled any upcoming visits. Now I'm told that I drove to Knoxville on 312 after I was told they don't accept my insurance but it now seems that they didn't know the change with my insurance that changed January 1st up to March 12th. They said that I brought in my new insurance card to them, so according to them, I drove 30 to 35 miles each way, from Sevierville to Knoxville. I use the Google Maps on my Android phone, and it keeps track of where I go and how many stops I make. It says that I haven't left Sevierville any time that day. I'm good. I can travel 30 plus miles without a car and my phone, even though I had it with me all day. <laughs> so.
So That My Friends was a collection of Glitch and the Matrix stories for this week on this beautiful Tuesday, May the 28th. As I stated in my community post, yesterday was Memorial Day, and uh, Patience was off, so I wanted to take the day off and just spend some time with her. We did some stuff. Uh, I got to play Lumberjack, cutting branches with a hatchet um, in the front yard. We recently had some really bad storms come through this area, and the tree out front decided it wanted to lose three fairly large limbs. And I have one of those little handheld chainsaws that I was going to use, but the battery was dead, because apparently I plugged it into the wrong charger, which, go me. So I thought it was charged all the way, and whenever I went to use it, it was completely dead. So, that was fun. Um, I found the correct charger and put it on there, but I still had to get the work done, because, you know, we wanted to get done during the day. So, we, uh, I went to Ace and bought a hatchet. Now, something fun about hatchets is they're just fun to use. I'm not going to lie to you on that. It's kind of fun. It's kind of uh, it's kind of entertaining to actually chop up branches with a hatchet. And these are like thick branches. You're ta I'm talking decent diameter, slightly, mm, I'd say small on the smaller end, I would say probably around the same width as like a soda can. So, larger than that at the other ends, where they're much larger. But anyways, uh, so I got to use that, and it was fun. It's very exhausting work, though. I'm not going to lie. It's neither here nor there. I don't know why I'm talking about this. T yesterday was a day off, so hopefully you enjoyed these Glitch in the Matrix stories on this glitchy Tuesday. I did. Good stuff. Always entertaining and interesting. So, yeah. A few item stories, but these ones were not just your normal lost and then found. They were all very different in my opinion so hopefully you all enjoyed them and if you did please do hit that thumbs up button if you are new to the channel and liked what you heard consider hitting the subscribe button as that helps a lot if you want early access to content like this you can also go to patreon or hit the join button down below the video where as little as a dollar a month you get early access to my content that's literally just crowdfunding the channel um helping me push further into this and do this more i do this full time but all the support helps more than I could ever even, like, begin to explain. So, thank you to all of you who support the channel. And if you can't or don't want to, that's totally fine, too. You guys just watching my videos helps a lot. So, yeah. You can also just do a super thanks, which is a one-time uh, YouTube side uh, tip to the channel. Again, never expected, but always appreciated. Um... I think there's just like a, a thanks button under the video. I'm not 100% sure how that always looks. It might look different. I'm not... Yeah. If it says thanks and that's what you want to do, that's how you do it. Um, I do have merch. There's a merch store link down below the video as well in the description. Um, I have some decent stuff that I've made. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, I think I'm done talking about things. You... Um, I don't know why I said you. The other thing that we do here on the channel is on Glitch Videos, we do what is called the Word of the Week. On the screen right now in several moments prior to now is a collection of the screenshots that I took of all the comments left using last week's Word of the Week, which was Clutch. This was an easier word, as, has, as it has many meanings, and a good number of you commented with it, so thank you. To each and every single one of you who did, and if you didn't, that's okay as well. Again, never expected, but it's just a fun thing we do. That said, this week... The word of the week is a little more complicated. This week, we're going with mellifluous. That's right. That's a, it's a hard word to say, it's a hard word to spell, and it's a hard word to use. M-E-L-L-I-F-L-U-O-U-S. It means having a smooth or rich flow, or to be filled with something such as honey that is sweet. Or that sweetens, I suppose I should say, not is sweet. Yeah. It is a hard word to use. It does not feel natural to use the word mellifluous. But if you can use it in a sentence, do so. Because I have a feeling next week there won't be quite as many of you on the screen. Just saying. That all said, friends, hopefully you're having a beautiful day. Hopefully I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important. You are the best you that you can be. Don't forget it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And of course, until I see you again, my lovely friends, much love and sleep well.